You know, that's the biggest fear of every single person is to trip when you walk out the door onto the stage. In fact, Eric Hughes just told me just a few minutes ago, he, he was talking to uh, uh, Mr. Dodsworth back there. He said, 10 bucks if you trip when you walk out. So Eric, you owe me 10 bucks. I just did that. <laughs> Oh, man, what a great privilege to be here with all of you, and what a great crowd tonight. This is awesome. If I have said something to you, if I have greeted you or talked to you or acknowledged you in any way this weekend, I want you to stand to your feet right now. Stand up. Man, I've got some work to do. My goodness. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Man, what a privilege. What a privilege to be here with all of you, and uh, man, seeing so many people that I, that I know and that I love, and just being able to, I, actually, I'm not seeing really anything with these lights right now, <laughs> but I believe, I believe what uh, Pastor Mater said was exactly correct. I believe that God is speaking. I was just challenged, challenged in, the, in the side room over there with the worship, just pouring my heart out and listening to you, and boy, this place sounds great when you all worship, and I'm just confident, I'm confident that God wants to speak to us, wants to speak to us, not only tonight, but I want, he wants to speak to us in this entire weekend. I don't know why, but I told Pastor Heath, I, I told Jonathan Heath, I said, you know, just the Lord, I feel like the Lord has laid a tremendous burden on my heart for this youth challenge. I know that the Lord helped us in West Harrison, and that was a wonderful time together, but the Lord has laid this on my heart, because I just, I've, I, I, there's so many, so many people here that I know and appreciate. I want to see you not only just make it, but I want to see you excel as believers. I want to see you grow in grace. I want to see you be godly, righteous young people that stand out and stand firm in a day when everything is pushing in. That's one of my greatest passions. So God has laid a tremendous burden on my heart for this whole weekend. And I'm looking forward to getting to know you. I'm looking forward to talking with you. I'm looking forward to playing games with you. That big ball game, if you, I don't care if you're 90. It, I don't want you to play it if you're 90. Please don't. <laughs> but if you're 90, if you, I don't care if you're 90 and you, if you've never seen, it's one of the funniest things you've ever seen in your life. You're going to want to be up there and see that big ball. That ball is tall and when it hits people, uh, it, it, it has, it, it knows no friends. It knows no friends. It will flatten you. Uh, and it is fun. It is very, very enjoyable to watch. Well, we're in the West. Usually in Youth Challenge East, we, we, we talk to, we ask them what states they're from. But the, you, from here, if you're, any, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're anywhere within a five, six hour radius, you're from the West, right? Yeah. This is, and they make it bigger in the West, right? Everything's bigger in the West, right? At Youth Challenge East, they have this, this little pond, these little body of water. Here you have a, a lake. There they have like these little hills. Here you have cliffs. And you play on the for ultimate frisbee on the edge of a cliff. And if you think I'm kidding, show up tonight. That, that, that ground where we're going to be playing is literally on the edge of a precipice, right? So when he said about falling off, there is a real reality that you could literally fall over the edge. So you're going you're gonna to want to make sure you're up there tonight. I'm going to be up there and we're going, to have, we're going to have a great time. It's going to be good. Here's what I want you to do. If you're, if, you're, if you're 35 or older, you don't have to play this game. But if you're 35 and under and you're sitting in the audience tonight, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you some basic instructions. I'm going to say a number, just any number. And I want you to get in a group of people of that number, Okay? Now, I'm going to start counting backwards from 10 until I get to 1. By the time I get to 1, you should be in a group of that number. So if I say 5, you should be in a group of how many? Five. Not 4 or not 6. If you're in a group of 4 or 6, you're going to be out, okay? So when I give you a number, I'm going to give you the number. I'm going to start counting backwards to 0, and you need to get into a group of that number. So slide your stuff under your seat so you don't step on it. And again, if you're 35 or older... You don't have to play unless you want to. I think it'd be great if you did. All right, ready? Here we go. Ten. Okay, ten. Nine. Eight. 
seven, six, five seconds, four, three, two, one. Okay, it's time. Time. Okay, look at your group. If there are more than 10 or less than 10, you need to go sit down. Go sit down. Okay, I'm going to call another number. Here we go. Five. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Now, that should have been pretty simple. You should have been able to divide your group in half. Pretty easy. Okay? Now, I want you to look at the group that you're with. The next time you move, you cannot be in a group with any of those people. Okay? Ready? Here we go. Seven. Ten seconds. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One time. Okay. If you look at your group, if you have more than seven, you're out. Go sit down. If you have less than seven, you're out. Go sit down. Okay. All right. Here we go. Thirteen. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, some of you better hurry up. Three. Two. Count them. One. Time. If you're not in a group of 13, is, this, is there 13 in this group? You guys are just like, y'all come. Just get over here. Is, that, is there 13 back there? 13 here? 13 here? Okay. All right, here we go. Nobody in the same group. Three. Here we go. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Oh, man, we have some pretty good groups. All right, here we go. All right, this is it. Let's see. All right, ready? 30. 10 seconds, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, stop. Count this, count this group. You guys are all done. Good try. <laughs> count this group. What do you got? 26? 27? 28? You coming? You raised your hand. Come on. 29? 30, right here. All right, give the winning group a round of applause. <laughs> now listen, I don't want to hear anything the rest of the weekend about you not knowing each other, all right? Because I saw people who have never met before saying, come here, run into my arms, run into my arms. And you're in full embrace, man. I saw people hugging each other from Bible colleges that aren't even allowed to touch each other at school. <laughs> They're probably taking advantage of the system right there. <laughs> Oh, man, love being around young people. You guys are so motivating to me, so motivating to me. You guys have all these awesome traditions, if you call them traditions. By the time all of us old people catch up, it's lame, right? Right? There was this thing way back in the day that some people knew about, and it was called MySpace. And I'm not talking about my bedroom, right? <laughs> There's some people, and the old people are like, oh, yeah, I know all 
And, and then you guys, I remember where I was when I heard about this old, old, old thing for the first time called Facebook. Old, right? I remember getting a Facebook. I got a Facebook and thought I was cool. And I told some people, like, hey, I got a Facebook, got some followers. And they're like, man, Insta's where it's at, bro. How many of you have an Instagram account? Okay, keep your hands up if you have a Twitter account. <laughs> Everybody put their hands up. There's only one person I know in the room that has a Twitter account, and that's Jonathan Heath. And that's why he has all the gray hair. I love your traditions. You guys have some great traditions, or at least I call them traditions. Like I said, four, five, six months, it's a fad, it comes, it goes. But for you young people, it's traditions. You guys have these traditions that, that come and they go. Uh, you had this tradition for a while that uh, Cam Newton made popular. He'd run into the end zone, he would spike the football, and then he would do this thing. Maybe you don't even remember it. He would put one foot behind the other and he would go like this. Remember that? What's that called? The dab, yeah. You know all about that, the dab, you know? I, I go to the bank, I make a deposit. <clears throat> oh yeah, right? Change my daughter's diaper, wash my hands, dab. <laughs> it's awesome, man. Yeah, dabbing, yeah, it's great. You have this other thing, this, this Snapchat. How many of you have a Snapchat? How many of you have snapped somebody since you've been here? How? You have no service. <laughs> None. There's nothing here, right? My phone was like, I don't like you right now. <laughs> I can't talk to anybody. Snapchat filters, right? Filters, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you, you, right? you, you, you hold your phone up and you look normal until you open your mouth. And then all these crazy things happen to your face. And you're like, what is wrong with me? Why do I have ears and my tongue's hanging way out? Right? That used to be, see, there's only three people laughing. That's obviously not cool anymore. Just me and those four people that know about that. Guys, you guys, it's our team. It's our turn, okay? We'll meet and we'll talk about Snapchat filters. It's, it's obviously lame already. You guys did this thing for a while as teenagers called the Mannequin Challenge. Does anybody know about the Mannequin Challenge? Is that, yeah. We should, I think somewhere along the way this weekend, we should do a giant Mannequin Challenge, right? Like in this room. It's where, it's where somebody says, okay, mannequin challenge, and everybody freezes at what they're doing, right? And somebody literally walks through the entire room filming, filming, and, and everybody's frozen in place, taking a drink, washing their hands, whatever they're doing, eating food, leaning up against something, hugging the girl they're not supposed to be, right? Whatever it is. They would love to be frozen in that position, just, right? And then they would post them on social media. Called it the mannequin challenge. You guys have toys. Toys are still popular with young people. How many of you have, how many of you still have your old toys? Does anybody have your old toys? The toys you, how many of you have Legos? Anybody have any Legos? Yeah, there's some people that have some Legos. How many of you, how, how many of you have Barbies? Like some of your Barbies, your Barbie collection? <laughs> there's some guys raising their hand. All right. All right. How many of you know, I'll, I'll admit something I've never admitted, I don't think I've ever admitted publicly. I had a doll growing up. I really did. My, my mom bought me, there, for a while, this, they came out with this doll for boys called My Buddy Jeremy. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? There's actually, yeah, there's, did you have one, Mike? You didn't? Okay. It's just me then. And it was literally a doll for boys, and I played with it. I had a doll for boys. You guys, did, if you kept your toys, it didn't matter. What, what they're doing now is they're making toys for young people, like they're, they're their size. How many of you have a fidget spinner? Look, those are even out of popularity. There's just a few of us that have fidget spinners. How many of you had a fidget spinner? Yeah, absolutely. There's a bunch of people that have fidget spinners. I have my very own high grade, it's, it's like stainless steel, it's super heavy. The bearings are like, they're not from China, they're like from a really, really like American made bearings. You spin that thing and it just spins forever. I have my own fidget spinner. It's one that's so bad to be cool. They make fidget cubes. You just play with them. That's all you do is just fidget with them. Right? In school, in school, I got in trouble for having a, just fidgeting with my pen. And now they're making money. Somebody's making money on this, fidget cubes. Something that came up recently in popularity that has actually kind of gone out of popularity already is something that was, something that became pretty popular. That I, and as I thought about this idea of the missing piece, this idea of puzzles, was I thought about, I, I thought about this thing that was in major popularity just not too long ago. It's called the Rubik's Cube. Oh, yeah. 
How many of you have one of these? Oh, wow, there's some people that do. How many of you had one of these? <laughs> there's just some gray-headed people who are like, I did. <laughs> All right? These things, these things, I think they were invented in the, I think in the late 60s, and they, and they caught fire as a, as a puzzle, and, it's a, and I, I want to talk to you tonight a little bit about that. But there's one more tradition before I do. There's one more tradition that I thought has been pretty cool, um, and it's called the bottle flipping challenge. There's all these challenges on Facebook. Cinnamon challenge, right? Take a spoonful of cinnamon, put it in your mouth. The Momo challenge, that was scary. Man. They have this idea that you drink, you take a bottle of water and you drink it down to a certain level. And once you're done drinking it down to that certain level, you take the bottle, hold it by the top, throw it up in the air, and it should land upright on a flat surface. And if you don't believe me, there's somebody, that, there's somebody that heard me speak and they heard me share this and they went and looked it up and there's guys that can actually land a bottle on a flat surface and then land another bottle on its cap, cap to cap. So this, this is a real challenge. How many of you know about the bottle flipping challenge? How many of you are, who, who do you know that's sitting next to you that's really, really good at this? I have some bottles of water here. I have four bottles. Okay, all right, get up here, man. I need three more. Josh? I, I'll, take, I'll take you in the, oh, you, are you both named Josh? Well, yeah, you both, come on, come on. We'll take all the Joshes. And you, right there, yep, you, raise your hand. Okay, step on up, guys. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give the person that lands it a $20 tab at YC Cafe. Okay, I'm gonna, you guys got that, Mr. Mayor, you got that written down, $20 tab? Okay, here's what you can do. You can take a drink, one drink, okay, one drink. Once you take it from your lips, you got to screw the cap on it and try it. You get one try. Okay, ready? All right, crack, crack them open. One drink. One drink. Now, if any of you are staying in dorm number six, you are. I think almost all of you are, actually. I think every one of these guys is in dorm number six. No, you're not. Oh, you're five. Oh, sorry. Prank five. No, <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, ready? We're gonna listen. We're gonna start. We're gonna start right down there from here. And what's your name? Eli. Eli. We're gonna start with Eli. Give him a little bit of space there, Josh. All right, he, here we go. Oh, all right, good try, Eli. All right, Josh. Ooh, so close. Oh, <laughs> good try. And here we go. This is for all the marbles right here. Oh, I give these guys a round of applause. Here, let me see that. <laughs> Put her on stage. Now the question is, can I do it? I don't know whose bottle this was. Now, if if I land this, now I lost the cap. That's going to get messy. <laughs> if I land this, I want a twenty dollar tab at the YC Cafe. I don't know. One try. Here we go. Ooh. Worth a try. Now, I expect Mark Burley to have a bottle of water tonight when no one's looking and be over there. Can I stop? Can I stop what I'm saying? Can I stop what I'm saying just for a second? Let me share something really important with you. I'm, I don't know if I'll ever get to do this again. I want to share something really important with you. How you treat, how you treat young people, how you treat the people around you, and the younger kids around you, makes a world of difference, and you may not know it. When I was a kid. I was probably, and this is, I'm, you're indulging me tonight. Thank you for indulging me tonight. When I was a little kid, I was at a youth, I was at a camp meeting. And uh, I had, I grew up in the West. I grew up in, I was born in South Dakota, and I lived in South Dakota until I was eight and moved to Canada and lived in Canada. And up in Canada, they don't play a lot of basketball. They play ice hockey. And so we weren't, we didn't play a lot of basketball. We just, we played a lot of hockey. And so when I went to this family camp, there I was in this, they had this big gymnasium. There were Basketball goals in there on both ends. And there were a bunch of Bible college guys, kind of like these handsome, good-looking guys down here in the audience. And they were all playing basketball, and it was a great thing. 
And they were out there dribbling the ball and running up and down the court. And I just, I didn't have any shame, kind of like now. I, don't, I didn't, didn't have any shame. I just kind of wandered onto the court and said, hey, I'd like to play. Well, they just ignored me and kept playing. And I said, hey, hey, I'd like to play. Well, finally, they didn't, they didn't respond, so I just picked up a ball and just walked out. This has nothing to do with what I'm going to share with you tonight. But it's really important. I just picked up a ball, and I walked out on the court, and I, I began to play. Well, they got upset with me. And they said, hey, hey, get off the court, kid. Get off the court. Well, you know how it is when, you, when they run down to that end of the court. I'm over here trying to make a basket. Actually, more, it was more like this when I was right, trying to make a basket. I'm over there dribbling the only way I know how to dribble two hands hey kid get off the court get out of here go on and I'll never forget one one guy in particular I remember his name was Jeremy Jeremy got really really rude with me he chewed me out or he started to anyway but there was a Bible college guy there that I in my memory in my memory this guy was like eight foot tall eight foot tall and he walked over to that kid Jeremy this punk and he looked him in the eye and he said, he, he was playing ball with everybody else. And he looked him in the, I was probably annoying him like I was annoying everybody else. And he looked at that kid, Jeremy, and he said, hey, he said, he's not hurting anybody. Let him play. He's fine. And then he said, in fact, he said, why don't you play on, why don't you, do you want to be on my team? And there I was, just a little kid. And all of a sudden, I was, I literally was with the biggest dude in the room. And he said, hey, come be on my team. And after the game was over, he said, hey, you want to come back and hang out in the dorm with us? And I'll never forget. I'll never, ever, ever, ever forget it. Walking back to the dorm and hanging out with that man right back there, Mark Gurley. Had a tremendous, young people, listen to me, had a tremendous impact on my life. And if I've had any impact on young people, it's because of people like him over and over and over again who have, had, who have said, hey, you can be a part of my world. Don't ever ever underestimate the power of impact that you have. Can you give Mark a round of applause? Thank you. <clears throat> these puzzles, man, these are great. These are neat. You know, when I, started, when I started paying attention to young people, I began to look around, I began to, I began to notice that they were playing with these, and they, they, they just seemed like, it just seemed like overnight they were everywhere. I was a youth pastor at that point in time, and they just seemed to show up all over the place, and every, it seemed like every kid in high school had one, they were playing with them at lunch and at recess time, it just, they, were, they, they just, they seemed like they had to have them, and, it, and there were all these different kinds showing up, and I began to notice, and I, as I paid attention to them, I began to see some several things about the Rubik's Cube that kind of stood out to me. How many of you have ever solved one of these? Okay, there's one, two, three, four. How many of you, can, is there anybody here that can solve them really fast? Okay, listen, I want you in the blue. Now, uh, you, I want you to come up, back up. Okay, is there anybody else that's fast at it? I have a couple. I'd like to see you. Okay, come on up, guys. Give these guys a round of applause. Step on up to this table. Step on over there, man. Now, if you, it, it, you can actually get really, really good at solving these. Here's what, go ahead and mess them up. Go ahead and mess them up. Just watch them. This is incredible. Just watch. Yeah, mess them up really good, okay? You're messing it up for him, and he's messing it up. You're going to switch, so really just destroy that thing, okay? <laughs> now, here's what I plan. I plan, I plan to make it worth these guys' while to get up here and do this under a little bit of pressure. I have a $50 bill, $50 for the person that's going to solve this. Now, the, here's, the, here's the deal. You can't be up here the rest of the time when I'm speaking, okay? You're going to have to get it done. We're going to set a little timer. You're going to have about two minutes to solve. How many of you think you guys can do it in two minutes? How many of you think you could do it in two hours? How many think you'd be able to do it in two days? How, how many people don't even have two seconds to think about doing it? Just forget it. How many of you pulled the stickers off your Rubik's Cube? <laughs> I'm that kid. Totally that kid. The struggle was real. It was very real. Okay? 
You got it, you got it pretty messed up? Look at that. Hold it up so they can see it. I want them to see that. Yeah, yeah. It's a, this puzzle here is all messed up. It's, it's, it's supposed to look like this when it's all said and done. And they've got it looking like that. All right, guys, here's what you want to know. I want you to switch. Uh, let's see. I'll get Logan, can you give me a two-minute timer on you your phone there? Okay. You, you switch. You guys have each other's Rubik's Cube. You really messed his up, right? You didn't peel any of the stickers off or move them around. Okay, because it's unsolved. Okay. You got a two-minute timer there, Logan, for me. All right, here's what I want you to do. I want you to take two minutes, and if, if, if neither of you can solve in two minutes, no 50 bucks. But if one of you, whichever one of you solves first, you're going to give you 50 bucks, you're going to get to keep the Rubik's Cube, and the other guy gets to keep the Rubik's Cube as well. Okay, do you understand? All right, let's count down from three. Okay, ready? Now, on one, on go, he's a two-minute timer. Here we go, ready? Three... There's 50 bucks. I mean, just look at that. That's five hours worth of work at 10 bucks an hour. Okay? Do you know that 6% of, only 6% of people in the world know how to solve, I mean, 6% of the people in the entire world know how to solve a Rubik's Cube? And you look at that, actually, if you look at the numbers, the math of the people in this room, that, that's about right. There's 43 quintillion ways that a Rubik's Cube can be configured. When you, sh when you shape, mess it all up, you knock it all down. Oh, yeah, okay, it looks like we got a side solved over there. How much time do we have left? A minute 10? There's less than 10 people that can solve a Rubik's Cube, but they can do it under six seconds. Six seconds. Look it up on YouTube. It is insane. Every legal permutation of the Rubik's Cube can be solved in 20 moves or less. 20 moves. How much time do we have left? 45, 45 seconds. This is for 50 bucks, guys. He's sweating? You would be too if for 50 bucks we're on the line. Time? 20 seconds. Oh, he's got, he's got a side solve. We oh, almost dropped it. It's for $50. Oh, my goodness! You get to keep the room cube. Oh, awesome job, man. Good job, dude. $50? Good job. Well done. Give it up to these guys. Good job, dude. Awesome. Awesome. Man. <laughs> that thing looked like it had been put in a blender and like he was like, boom, boom. <laughs> Done. Give me 50. Right? Awesome. How many years have you been solving Rubik's Cubes? Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. As I begin to pay attention to Rubik's Cubes, I saw a couple of things. Here's a couple of things I want to share with you that I saw. First of all, I, share, I saw that there, as you study Rubik's Cubes and you study puzzles in general, there's lots of different types of puzzles, right? You know, if you know anything about puzzles, you know there are lots of types, right? There's, there's, the, pieces, there's the puzzles that I can do, right? You get it in a box. It's a bunch of cardboard pieces. It's all cut out. It's got a picture of a deer on it. It's drinking at a waterfall. In a little pond, a piece of green grass, blue sky, right? Five pieces. I got that. <laughs> right? Some of you older, some of you older, I should move, better be careful. Some of you more mature people, you might take a 500 piece puzzle, right? It's family reunion, young people out there playing basketball, and women, women, some of the women are in, their, in the kitchen talking, and you're there over the cup of coffee, just looking at it putting pieces in. Slowly but surely, you put it all together, and someone inevitably will say, hey, we should laminate this thing. Hang it on the wall, right? And unfortunately, some people actually follow through with that, and there's art. And <laughs> right? 
<laughs> There's the 3D puzzles that you put together. And you know what I'm talking about? They're, they're the cardboard and it actually makes a shape, a tower. How many of you ever put one of those together? Yeah? You go into Cracker Barrel. Now oh, Cracker Barrel drives me up a wall. I hate Cracker Barrel. First of all, I don't like their food. But you, before you ever get there, I know, I made enemies right there. When you get there, you walk into Cracker Barrel and you walk through the store and you realize that somebody has made money by taking two nails and bending them together. And they put it in a package and they wrote puzzle on it. And I'm like, who's, somebody's, somebody's making money. This is stupid. And somebody will come along, like my wife, she loves us. Honey, we should buy this. This would be great. No, we're paying, no, it's two nails. That's all it is. As I looked at these Rubik's Cubes, I realized that there's lots of different types of puzzles. Let me show you the types of puzzles that there are. And, and these are all just Rubik's Cube puzzles. Look, I brought some with me. Look at this. Look, okay, that, that's a normal one. We had some of those. We had that one. Oh, uh, look, at, look, at, look at this one. Uh, this one here. Oh, it's all the same. Okay. No, there, there really are some different ones. Look at that. Look at this puzzle right here. Check it out. That is a four by four. Okay, wow. Check. That's pretty nice. Uh, look at the, here's, here's a, this is a five by five. Isn't that pretty cool? Okay. Uh, this one here is, this is more my speed. It's two by two. <laughs> right? And honestly, I've even tried this one. Yeah, that's embarrassing to tell you that. That's why it looks the way it does. <clears throat> uh, there's this one here that's, this one here that, actually, this is really my speed. It's literally... Three by one, right? But that really is legitimately a puzzle, a Rubik's Cube. Check that out. It's pretty awesome. Uh, there's, there's this one here that's all the same color. It's silver. I call it a mirror cube. And yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? And what's awesome about it is the blocks aren't the same size, so as you turn it, it takes this weird contortion shape, right? That's pretty awesome. There's this one here. Ooh. The black Rubik's Cube of death. <laughs> Actually, these are all Rubik's Cubes of death. I have no idea how to solve them. <laughs> this one's an octagon. Isn't that cool? All these different puzzles just... Say, all the same premise, just a different puzzle. There's, there's, this thing, there's, these, there's this one here. The diamond. How many of you, how many of you want to come play with these after... Well, you can't. I'm just kidding. I'll, I'll let you. I'll, yeah, I'll let you. Check this out. You think your life was complicated? Look at this. Isn't that cool? Look at this. My buddy made it spell YC. And he didn't peel the stickers off and just put them back. He literally solved this thing so it would say YC. And what's YC stand for? Youth Challenge. Yeah. Look at that. Every side. YC. 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 Oh, say, can you see, right? <laughs> All these different puzzles. They, in fact, they may, you, can, you can get so good at being, you can be such a Rubik's Cube pro that you can have these special Rubik's Cubes that are made specifically to learn to solve. They call them speed cubes, and all the corners are kind of rounded off so that they spin faster. Let me ask you something. Do you have a speed cube? You don't? Okay. Yeah, if you'll tr I'll trade you. You'll want this one. This is an incredible, this is awesome. Speed cubes are set up for, for you to spin really, really fast. And so the guys that, the guys that have the six-second time, that's, these are the kind of cubes that they use. There's all these different types of puzzles. Look at them. There's, there's all different ones. There's this little three-by-one. This is two-by-two. Two. They're just all over the place. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They're all, almost all of them are solved. Even this one is solved. Here's a second thing that I noticed about these puzzles is that, that these puzzles are all, they're all predicated, actually any puzzle really is predicated on the idea of perfection. It's built around the idea that there is a way for it to be solved. This is a way that it should look. And when it doesn't look this way anymore, you set out to solve it. You set out to make it different until it looks the way that it's supposed to look. Well, as you pay attention and as you look at these puzzles and as you turn them around, you begin to realize that, man, just a few simple turns and the puzzle already begins to lose 
a little bit of its identity. Now, it's still a puzzle, but it's not right. Now, the question is, this is how bad I am. I, don't, I, did, I turned it three times. Let me see if I can turn it back. One. Two. Three. Done. You guys didn't clap for me like you clapped for him. In just a few turns, this little situation right here, this little puzzle, just a few turns, this little puzzle can go, can go from looking so cool. Remember these, remember these guys, met, I don't even know if I'll even be able to mess this up. This puzzle right here that, that, looks so, that looked so nice and neat a second ago with just, I think that's my 10th turn right there. In 10 turns, can go from looking like this to looking like this. That's pretty cool. And now, I need him to come back up here and help me to get it back. And the rest of the, the, rest of the evening, this puzzle is going to look like this until he actually takes it and he does something about it. Because the reality is, I don't know how to solve it. When you begin to study about how to solve this puzzle, though, you're going to learn something. First, here's what you're going to learn. You're going to learn that these puzzles, these Rubik's Cubes are based, the solving them is it's based on an algorithm. It's actually a mathematical equation that you use to solve this. Some of you just checked out right there. You're like, if it has to do with math, I'm out. I'm not done, done. Right? But it's, if you study the turns, once you get to it, once you solve the Rubik's Cube to a certain point, you begin to realize, hey, I can actually solve this using a, couple, a series of some of the same turns to get it to be how it's supposed to be. But do you turn this side first or do you turn this side first? Do you turn this side first or do you turn this side first? Because here's the reality. Even in that mathematical equation, there's still multiple ways that you can go about that mathematical equation to get the desired result. The reality is there are multiple ways to solve a Rubik's Cube. The other thing I noticed about the Rubik's Cube, and you have to know this in order to be able to solve this, you have to know that there are some constants about the Rubik's Cube. There are some constants about the Rubik's Cube. Every puzzle has a constant. I want you to say that with me. Every puzzle has a constant. Here are the constants about a Rubik's Cube, and it's what you need to know to be able to solve. The middle of every Rubik's Cube is always going to be that color. What color is this? What color is this? What color is this? Some, some of you are being really picky. Neon, okay, it's blue, all right? The reality is that, guess what? This middle green button, or square, or block, or whatever you call it, is always going to be green. No matter how much I turn this, no matter what I do to this puzzle, even if I spin it all the way around, this puzzle, this middle block never changed. This middle block on this side of the Rubik's Cube is always going to be green. And it is always going to be to the side of the orange block. So green, orange, blue. It's always going to be green, orange, blue, red. Green, green, orange, blue, red. And if you turn it the other way, it's going to be white, green, yellow, blue. White, green, yellow, blue. Every puzzle has a constant. And you have to know that. When you pick up that puzzle to solve today, you had to, you looked at that, didn't you? You looked at it, you looked at it, and you looked for... The final thing I noticed about Rubik's Cubes is this. I don't have to know. I don't have to know how to solve this puzzle. I get tired. I get sick and tired of trying to, to uh, fight with these things. I, I, like I said, I had one. In fact, I, I, started, I started to buy one uh, whenever all the young people in my youth group were getting them. And I picked one. I picked the guys up, and I played with it for a while. And I'm like, you know, I think I'd really like to try this. And I borrowed it for an evening, and I messed around with it. And finally, I said, this is dumb. This is stupid. I, I'm, I'm wasting a lot of time. I have no idea. I'm, I'm, I'll have Facebook to be cool. I'll get an Instagram to be cool. But I am not going to I'm not going to try to learn to solve a Rubik's Cube. This is crazy. You know why? Because I have, I had at that point young people in my youth group that could solve it in under a minute. Under a minute. Their hands flew. Josh, is that right? Josh was in my youth group. Their hands flew. And it was like, it just, all, you'd hand them any, a puzzle like this, all messed up, and they'd go click, 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 done. 
you, you, you give it to them, and they look, they turn it over a couple, and they click, 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 click. They, they spin, spin, twist, spin. And, and before you knew it, all the sides on this side were all green. And then all the sides on this side were all blue. And then before you knew it, they, they had two or three sides solved. And next thing you know, boom, they were done. And the reality was is that I didn't have to know how to solve it because I knew someone who did. In fact, here at Higher Ground, some of you guys are going to come and you're going to play with some of these puzzles. And guess what? When it's all said and done, I'm going to take them back. These aren't all mine. These belong to one of my buddies. I'm going to take them all back and hopefully I'm going to try to take them back solved, as many of them as possible. Because guess what? When you're all done playing with them, I'm going to call him and say, hey, listen, I paid you 50 bucks. Get up here. (laughs) Because I don't have to know how to solve. I just have to know someone who does. I looked at this idea, this idea of the missing piece, play on words here, the idea that's this missing piece, what's something missing in our heart, and I, I thought about this puzzle, and I thought about it, how it relates to our lives as young people. I thought about that in regards to this idea of a Rubik's Cube, and I thought about all the things, that, all the points that I had noticed about Rubik's Cubes, I began to think about them as it relates to young people. I began to think about this idea, remember the first point, remember there's lots of different types of puzzles. There's lots of different types of puzzles. There's lots of different types of puzzles, lots of different types of difficult situations that are here in this room tonight. There's some of you that walked into this room tonight and you're struggling because you just got out of a relationship. There's some of you that walked into this room tonight and you're struggling because your boyfriend just said, listen, it's over. And you guys have been together like two whole weeks. The reality is there's actually a lot of puzzles that are here in this room tonight. I think every one of us could be represented by something like this. There's a lot of people in here that are a puzzle, and some of these puzzles, are they take unique forms, and they take unique shapes. Some of these puzzles are puzzles of people that are part of a single-parent home. Some of these puzzles are part of... A, a parent of someone who's living in a home where a grandma and grandpa have had to step into your life because your parents weren't capable. Some of these puzzles are puzzles that are a reality of your world. Your world is, uh, your world is broken because of drug abuse and addiction. There's a lot of different types of puzzles. We come into these places, we come into an event like this, and we bring all of our baggage, not just our suitcase, not just our stuff, not just our, our garment bag, not just our nice clothes. We bring all of our baggage with us. And, 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 you, and you may think that everybody is nice and neat and individual and just everybody looks the way, but the reality is that we, we're different. God's created us different. He's given us a different set of circumstances. He's given us a different understanding. He's placed us in different geographical locations. And he's given us different parents. And he's all of that. And what we think oftentimes is supposed to be nice and neat and put together. And everybody should look the same. The reality is it looks way more like this. I, I should do this right here so someone's OCD will kick in. Actually, someone's OCD should kick in because this is a bigger one than all these. Why do they call it OCD? It should be called CDO, right? Only the OCD people got that. There's a lot of different types of puzzles. When we think that it should look like this, everybody should kind of be the same. We do all these things to help us to all get into the same. We have uniforms to make us all look the same, but the reality is that everybody's puzzle looks different. Here's another thing I've noticed about young people The reality is is that our puzzle oftentimes is messed up by just a few simple turns in life. The reality is our puzzle, it doesn't look like it should. Remember I said a puzzle is predicated, these puzzles are predicated on the perfect look, the perfect shape, the perfect perfect description, yellow on one side, white on the other, orange, blue, red, green. And oftentimes we... We measure ourselves by what we see in the ads. And the ads paint this kind of picture. But the reality is our puzzles often look different and they look messed up because of just a few simple turns. And those turns oftentimes are because of two things. First of all, they're as a result 
of choices that we've made. When you walked into this campground tonight, and today when you dropped your stuff off, you brought your baggage with you, the reality was that your world was a little messed up. Maybe it was a lot messed up. Maybe it maybe seemed pretty simple to everybody else, but to you, man, just a few simple turns of choices that you've made have landed you in a situation where you look at that and you're like, there's no way I can solve this. I've made choices academically in school to cheat. I've made choices, uh, I've made choices because of, of, of friends that I've hung out with and they're bringing me down. I've made choices of, of people uh, that, that I've allowed in, to influence my life. I've made choices of entertainment that I've allowed to infiltrate my world and my whole world is spiraling downward because of a, what I thought were just a few simple choices have turned out to be to cause my life to not look like it should. You've made choices in your relationships with the opposite sex. You've made choices of what you've looked at online. You've made choices about what you've talked about with that other person on the phone late at night. You've made choices about your parents and your respect or lack thereof for them. You've made choices about your friends. You've made choices about substances. You've made choices in just a few simple turns. And because of your choices, it doesn't look like it should. You're there because of your choices. I'll never forget, I'll never forget sitting down with my associate youth pastor. We had just finished Wednesday night service. This, ha this happened two years ago. We had just finished Wednesday night service. I had, I had preached about the wise men. And I had talked about, this was in December, I had preached about the wise men and I had talked about them coming to see Jesus. They, they were wise because they, they longed to see Jesus in the midst of a world that was supposed to be looking for Jesus. These wise men from afar off saw Jesus. And, they, and I had preached that and I just, I just poured my heart out. I had, I, was, I had just sat down with my youth pastor in the conference room of the church. The church was emptying out after Wednesday night. We were just sitting down, enjoying, just sharing after the service. We were just talking. And he got a phone call that changed my world forever. You see... I had gone to Ryan that day and at school, and I said, hey, Ryan, you going to be in church tonight? And Ryan was real shy. He was real quiet. He, 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 was, he, he certainly was a different kind of puzzle than the rest. Of the, he didn't really say a lot. I went to Ryan and said, hey, you going to be in church tonight? And Ryan looked at me, and he said, maybe. <laughs> He's just playing with me. So well, you better be there. Ryan showed up, and he sat, on the, he sat right over here, right in the back, right about where Steve Oliver is sitting. And I, I preached that message about the wise men, and I shared with him, I shared with, I shared with him, and I shared with about 50 other young people that night what it means to look for Jesus in the midst of this world. We got out, of, we let out of youth, and we walked, I was headed up to the conference room to talk to my buddy, and we walked past Ryan, and Ryan and a bunch of guys were standing there looking at their cars, and that Ryan was straddling his motorcycle, just got it, and he was, he was, they were, they were cracking on the engines, and it was loud, and it was, it was, rev, they were revved up, and they were, everybody was excited, and I, we just, I just, I acknowledged what they were doing, and I walked up, and we sat down in the conference room, and it wasn't 15 minutes later, we got that phone call that changed my world, because they said, Ryan... It's been street racing, and when you left the church parking lot, he had a terrible accident. We jumped in the car and ran down the road. It was, wasn't even a mile. It wasn't even a mile away from the parking lot of the church. And I'll never forget. There was no EMS had just an ambulance had been on the scene, and I, I jumped out of the car and I ran up there and, and saw some of the other guys that had been in the parking lot. And while they had been going fast at the beginning, they were, Ryan had taken off way out ahead of them, and he was gone, and he was looking back to see if they were coming. And as he looked ahead of him, a car turned right in front of Ryan on that motorcycle. And Ryan hit that car, glanced off that car, and flew about 50 feet. And I'll never forget jumping, running out of that car and running to see where Ryan was at, because they said Ryan was hurt. And it was, the EMS had just been there, and they'd taken Ryan, and nothing was, the only thing that was left of Ryan was a puddle of blood. Right there on the street. They, they had packed Ryan up, and they had taken, they were taking him out to the main highway where the helicopter was going to land. All of his friends, young people just like you, were standing around with, I mean, their eyes were as wide as all get up. They couldn't believe, couldn't believe what had just happened. 
They, they were walking up to me in a daze. Their voices were shaking. They said, I can't believe this. This was, this was an accident. Like, this was not supposed to happen. And uh, Ryan's dad showed up. Ryan's one of my best friends. Ryan's dad showed up there at the scene. And uh, he, he, he actually was already there when I got there. And he, he, was up, he was there and he was crying, crying. I remember he's sitting in the dash of his car and just, just kicking the dash of his car because he, he knew, he knew, he already knew the inevitable. A 16-year-old kid from my youth group, because of his own choice, got on a motorcycle, went down the road, out into eternity. Sometimes our lives are messed up because of choices that are our own. And you may say, wow, that's really, really heavy. But the reality is, is that it was just a series of choices that got Ryan there. It was just one little turn. Am I going to buy a motorcycle? Sure. Am I going to ride with my friends? Sure. Am I going to wear a helmet? Yes. I'm going to ride crazy? Sometimes. Am I going to rev the engines tonight after Wednesday night to show people that I'm cool? Yeah. You know what? If I had that motorcycle, I would have done it too. When I turn right out of this parking lot, all these other guys are with me. Am I going to show off? Yes. Am I going to show off more than the rest of them? Yes. And while when the, the accident that happened wasn't Ryan's fault, and Ryan wasn't actually going very fast at all when it happened, the reality was it was a series of decisions in Ryan's life that led him to that moment. It was the choice that he made. And young people, you're making a series of choices tonight. Tonight, and you will the rest of this weekend that will have a tremendous impact on your life. And you have, and you come to this, this youth retreat, this retreat weekend, and your situation doesn't look like it should because of the choices that you've made. But I know that there's some people here that have come to this youth retreat, that situation, you have a situation that looks like this, and guess what? It's from choices that other people have made. I'll never forget it as long as I live. I grew up in a two-parent home. My parents were missionaries to Native American people. Lived in South Dakota and in Canada. I told you about that. My parents did our, their best. They did their best to protect me. They did their best to love us. They did their best to make sure that we had a good quality, self, uh, a good quality home to grow up in. They, they wanted to make sure that we were loved and we were cared for. They, they protected us to no end. We, we had to be really careful about who we were allowed to go to stay the night with and who was allowed to come to our house and who we were allowed to play with and what neighbor kids were approved and what neighbor kids were not. They tried to protect us. But I'll never forget going over to someone's house to visit. I went down to the basement to play. As a 10, I think it was 10 or 11. And in just a few short minutes, when no one was looking, when no one was paying attention, somebody that was older than me, a teenager, took advantage of me. And in just a few short moments, my world, which was protected, it was nice, it was neat, it was put together, it was the way that it was supposed to be. Just a few quick decisions on the part of somebody, not, there were a lot of decisions that led up to that moment for him, but just a few quick decisions on the part of somebody, all of a sudden my world isn't perfect anymore. All of a sudden my world is messed up. All of a sudden my world is way out of whack. I tell you that because I want you to know that I've gone through some of the same things that you've gone through. There's some of you that are here tonight and your situation is imperfect because of the decisions that someone else has made. Someone else chose to hit you. Someone else chose to talk that way to you. Someone else chose to abuse you. Someone else chose to abuse your mother. Someone else chose to neglect Someone else made decisions that have failed you, and they've landed you in a spot that is far less than ideal. There's a lot of different types of puzzles, and the reality is in just a few short turns, either as a result of decisions that you've made or a result of decisions that others have made, 
our situations can seem pretty messed up. Here's what I want you to know. Tonight and this weekend, there are multiple ways to solve. There are some of you that come here tonight with, with baggage. It's baggage that maybe is a result of decisions you've made or decisions other people made. Maybe it's a result of decisions that no one has made. There's some of you, I have friends in this room tonight that just recently lost parents. I have friends in this room tonight that are living with grandparents because their parents won't have anything to do with them. I want you to know something tonight. This weekend is about finding the missing piece. This weekend is about getting us back in this direction. This weekend is about us being what we ought to be. The whole reason we pack everything up, the whole reason we came and unloaded, the whole reason we set it all up, the whole reason we do what we do this weekend is to get us back to what we ought to be and find the missing piece. So there's going to be multiple ways that you're going to go about solving this weekend. There's going to be times where you're going to be worshiping and the Lord's going to say to you, hey, listen, I want you to surrender this issue in your life. Hey, I want you to forgive this individual. Hey, I want you to, I want you to come. I want you to pray. I want you to pour your heart out to me. Hey, I want you to pull that counselor aside or I want you to pull that staff member aside or I want you to pull that YC Challenge board member aside and I want you to ask him about this. Hey, I want you to take some quiet time with me and just take a walk. And get to know me better. Hey, I want you to get, I want you to get in my word. I want to talk to you. Young people, the reality is we live in a world where it's one decision after the next. And although I would love to say that I know all I know a bunch of young people that look like this, the reality is that I don't think we'll ever look like this until we reach heaven. But we can be working in that direction. See, there's multiple ways to solve this Rubik's Cube, and there's multiple things that you may need in your life. It's not a one cut and dry answer. If it was, every single message that we preach would be about salvation. If it was, every single message we preach would be about holiness. If it was, every single message we preach this weekend would be about forgiveness. No, there are, every one of you needs something different. The question is, are you willing to acknowledge what you need? Are you willing to realize, acknowledge there's multiple ways to solve I want you to notice that there's some constants. Every puzzle has some constants, just like this side is orange, and this side is green, and this side is yellow, and this side is blue, and this side is white. There's some constants in your life. Here's what I believe about young people. First of all, I believe this. I believe that every young person is here, listen to me, by God's appointment. It is no accident that you are here at YC West. You're here by God's divine appointment. Secondly, this constant in your life is that you're here in his keeping. He knows about you. He cares about you. He knows your situation and your situation. He loves you. You're here in his keeping. He takes it a personal responsibility for you to be here. Third, you're here under his training. If you came here just simply to play ball or just simply to hang out or just simply for the cappuccino, that's okay. But I want to encourage you to be here to get something from this weekend. I want you to be here to give, to not to get, to just really, truly just dive in and allow God to speak to your heart. Why? Because if you'll let him, you can be here under his training and he will speak to you this weekend. And then finally, you're here for his time. It's no mistake that we live in 2019, Brother Questenberry. It's no mistake that we live in a world where Donald Trump is the president. And that somebody else is going to be the president in six more years, at least. It's no mistake that we live in a politically divided situation. It's no mistake that we live in a culture that seems to embrace everything that we as parents have told our kids is, it's wrong. I just, we just allowed a young lady to enroll in our school that was in public school. and maybe Some of you go to public school and maybe you face this. I'll tell you what, it shocked me, out of my, it shocked me to my core. 
This young lady told me, she said, I get a lot of grief in public school. She said, my classmates give me a hard time because I will not admit that I'm bisexual. What? When I was in school, we made, we, 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 it was weird to be bisexual. And now here's this young lady getting made fun of because she won't say that she is, which means that everybody else in the room is saying, yeah, absolutely, I can have it both ways. It's no mistake that we live in this culture, that God is raising you up and you up and you up and you up in this culture, that God is, wants to make a picture of, of a trophy of his grace in this culture with you. There's some constants in your life. Let me tell you some constants. First of all, there's God's word. Young people, <laughs> man is going to mess it up. Man is going to mess up. Humans will, they will fail you miserably at times. But God's word will never, ever fail you. There's not only God's word, but there's his church. Oh, I'm not just talking about the church that you go to. No, I'm talking about Christ's church. You want to know what Christ's church looks like? It looks like this tonight. We have people from all over the United States. And you begin to look and you begin to see what God is doing around the world. And his church is at work, young people. And that, that gives me great hope because some of you come from really, really tiny churches. And you may say, well, our church doesn't have very many people. Guess what? There are churches out there with thousands of people. Well, our church really isn't doing anything for God. Guess what? There are churches, you can be encouraged that there are churches that are doing something for God. You say, well, our church, our church seems to fight and bicker all the time. Guess what? That's not the way that church is everywhere else. Our church is full of people that love each other and want to see people grow and want to see people help. And want, that's a constant in your life. Not only is there God's word and not only is there God's church, but there's God's people. I'm so excited about being together with all of you this weekend, spending time together. And that's a constant. You know why? You know why? Because I can sit down with Brother Questenberry at 34, and he's 35, or 45, or 55, or anyway, no. And I can share with him, and I can say, hey, man, I, I'm, I'm going through something. And I know you live in Indiana, and I'm just, man, I'm facing some really, really deep water. And because he is my friend, he can share with me from God's word and from his life experience, and we can grow and develop together. He's part of the body of Christ. There's Bible colleges that are here representing this weekend. I want you to talk to them. You know why? Because they represent training houses, training homes for people to grow and develop and be stronger, godly young people. That's part of the constant of being a Christian. Part of the constant of this puzzle. It's God's church, God's word, and God's people. Young people, there's some constants in your life that you can hang on to. You can know that you're created in the image of an almighty God and he loves you unconditionally. He loves you too much to leave you the way you are, but he gives you all the strength to make you like he is. Finally, you don't have to know. Here's what I want you to catch. You don't have to know how to solve your puzzle. It's not always going to look perfect. There are going to be some twists and some turns. There's going to be some decisions that you make and say, oh, man, I think this is a great idea. And you turn, and you know what? It seems like you've got to go back and undo that decision. That, 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 that doesn't ever stop. That doesn't ever stop. It just seems like you turn, and, oh, you, and it, doesn't, it doesn't change when you become an adult. Should we, should we take out a mortgage? Sure, we should. Whoa, that was a bad decision. Should we have another baby? Oh, those are always good decisions. All right? Should I get married to her? Whoa. <laughs> just, just, now, once you do, you hang on to that. <laughs> Reality is we try and we work to decide. We work to, we work to get it right. We work to hold it against what should be. Here's what I want to tell you. Here's what I want to tell you about this right here. Is ultimately, you don't have to know. 
you don't have to know how to make this look like this. I don't know how to make this piece look like this piece, but guess what? I know the man who does. And young people, you don't have to know how to solve in your life. But this whole weekend is about introducing you to and reacquainting you with the person who knows how to take broken pieces and give you peace. Real, true, everlasting peace. Peace that says that no matter the decisions that I've made in my life that have caused me major grief, I can know that everything's clear between my soul and the Savior. No matter the decisions that, every, that, that other people have made that have caused me damage, I can know that, that, that I'm a child of the King and He loves me unconditionally. I'm created in His image. Even though my puzzle looks different than anybody else, and I'm not sure that anybody else would know how to solve my puzzle, let me say this. This whole weekend again is about introducing you to the man who can. I'm encouraged this weekend. We're going to spend a lot of time. We're going to spend a lot of time having awesome activities. We're going to have, spend a lot of time sharing with you. We're going to spend a lot of time uh, worshiping together. We're going to spend a lot of time hearing from God's word. And it's all, it's all based around this idea. We're not looking for this but we're telling you that there's something better than this. There's, some, there's somebody that you can take and you can give your life to and slowly but surely he can guide you and lead you and make you what you ought to be for his honor and his glory. That's what, that's what I'm here for. I travel thousands of miles, a thousand plus miles to be here to tell you that. Kent Stetler traveled a thousand plus miles to be here to tell you that. Jonathan Heath packed it all up, and he's been, going, he's been running his little head off. He packed it all up to tell you that there is someone that can give you peace. That says, oh, I don't have it all figured out, but my, my puzzle is in the hands of the one who can figure it out. That's what Youth Challenge is all about. Would you bow your heads with me? Would you bow your heads with me? I, let me just share this, the words of this song. There's this song that says this. Are you tired of chasing pretty rainbows? Are you tired of spinning round and round and round? You wrap up all those shattered dreams of your life. And at the feet of Jesus, lay them down. Here's what the chorus that says. Give, give them all. Give them all. Give them all to Jesus. Give your shattered dreams, your wounded hearts, your broken toys. Give them all. Give them all to Jesus. And he will turn your sorrow into joy. I hope this weekend is about you meeting the one. Who can take a puzzle that seems so messed up and not just simply put the piece back together, but that can give you real, true, lasting peace. Let me pray with you as we head into this weekend together. Lord, what a privilege to know that there's peace, wonderful peace that comes down from the Father of love. And Lord, tonight we pray that you would take what I have said, what I've tried to say, maybe the thoughts and the things that I've conjured up in people's minds as they've identified issues and struggles and concerns and baggage that they've brought in this room with them tonight. Lord, I pray that that peace from Jesus above would sweep over their spirit tonight. And this whole entire weekend, fathomless billows of love. And Lord, as you do that this weekend, would you just draw men and women to yourself? 
Would you just make it easy for young people to step out and to step forward? Would you make it easy for young people, no matter where they are in their spiritual walk, to say, listen, I'm here on purpose and I'm going to grow tonight? Or would you help us to be all that you'd have us to be this Youth Challenge West weekend? For all that you do for us, Lord, we'll give you the praise in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, amen. It's been a pleasure to speak to you tonight.